Melissa was going back home from the swimming pool. She knew that the Mr. Megalopolis wasn't the safest place in Dreamland even during the day. That's why she preferred to stick to the well-lit streets with beautiful shop windows and crowds of people. Although this probably wouldn't save the young Dreamlander from a sudden attack of a giant nightmare, she still felt safer that way. When Melissa was passing by one of the closed supermarkets, something strange caught her eye. She saw a ghostly purple glow moving between the aisles. The girl got closer to the window so that she could get a better look at what was going on inside. What she saw made her freeze in place. A strange-looking girl with massive black hair and shark-like teeth was carelessly levitating between the shelves with food. The pockets of her shabby military jacket were filled with chocolate bars, packs of cookies and other snacks. And as if that wasn't enough, she also eagerly grabbed and tasted everything she could get her hands on. Melissa quickly realized that it wasn't a regular shoplifter. It was a dreamwalker. She heard a lot about them from her friends. They say dreamwalkers come to dreamland from a distant and mysterious place known as the real world. They possess supernatural powers and abilities which makes them powerful warriors and dreamland's only hope against nightmares. Although it doesn't mean that dreamwalkers are welcome in dreamland since most dreamlanders simply fear these half-gods. Melissa has never seen a dreamwalker before, so she had no idea what to do. She always thought dreamwalkers were nice and helpful, however, this one didn't look friendly at all. But before her hand had even reached the phone, the dreamwalker put her face through the window glass as if it was thin air and heased. Don't you even think about it, kiddo, or I'll eat your soul. This caught Melissa by surprise. She couldn't tell what scared her more, the rude, almost manly voice of the Dreamwalker or her ability to ignore solid walls. Melissa really didn't feel like testing if the Dreamwalker was serious about eating her soul, so she decided to run away. Little did she know that the girl with the shark-like teeth had no intention of letting her go. Instead, she got outside and followed Melissa. Melissa was running as fast as she could, however, the Dreamwalker had no problems keeping up. She was flying right behind the terrified girl, waiting for the right moment to grab her. Foreseeing the grave outcome of the chase, Melissa realized that her only chance was to get lost among other people. She ran up to a group of strangers chatting by the doors of some night bar and quickly dove in the middle of the crowd. The Dreamwalker didn't hesitate a second and started pushing everyone aside trying to find the fugitive. As expected, the crowd didn't like being treated like that, which quickly escalated into a fight. Melissa took this opportunity and sneaked away while her chaser was not looking. Melissa didn't remember how she got home. Only in her room she finally realized how exhausted she was. The girl couldn't stop thinking about the creepy dreamwalker in the supermarket. She heard all sorts of nasty stories about them, but what she saw tonight couldn't even compare to them. A dreamwalker attacked Melissa because she simply saw her steal some food from the supermarket. When Melissa recovered from the shock, she decided not to make any rushed conclusions and do a little internet research about dreamwalkers first. To her surprise, she came across quite a few stories of people who also suffered at dreamwalkers' hands. She also found a forum with multiple discussions about dreamwalkers and how dangerous they are to society. Now that Melissa knew she was not alone, she decided to share her own story. Frankly, she didn't expect any reaction to her post. However, several minutes later, she saw a reply. It said that what happened to Melissa was horrible and that all dreamwalkers should be banished back to the real world forever. The person behind the comment introduced himself as Nicholas. He told Melissa that he was in some kind of group of like-minded people who, as he put it, weren't the biggest fans of dreamwalkers. Once in a while, they get together in a special place to discuss the recent incidents involving Dreamwalkers. He also mentioned that their next meeting is scheduled for tomorrow and that Melissa could come by if she wants. 
Melissa gladly accepted the invitation, which made Nicholas extremely happy. They agreed to meet in the Central Park at 4 p.m. Before saying goodbye, Nicholas left a mysterious message. You're not alone anymore. On the appointed day, Melissa came to the meeting place. She felt nervous, but the thought that she was about to meet people who actually understood how she feels soothed her. Nicholas came exactly on time. He wasn't alone. Several more people came with him. Nicholas introduced them as his friends. At first, Melissa felt insecure among complete strangers. However, they turned out to be so nice and friendly, they soon were able to earn her trust. They spent the entire evening in the park, chatting about school, hobbies, music, and much more. It was so much fun that at some point, Melissa completely forgot she met these people only several hours ago. Finally, Nicholas mentioned Dreamwalkers. He told Melissa that he and his father founded an anti-Dreamwalker society because they're sick and tired of the chaos they bring from the real world. Their goal is to fight these interdimensional invaders until Dreamland is finally free of their terror. Currently, the society is not very big, but it's rapidly growing, and they think that Melissa should join them. For a moment, the girl stopped breathing. These words made her so excited, she didn't know what to say. Seeing her confusion, Nicholas continued speaking with even more passion and determination. These outsiders act like this city belongs to them. Sure, they help us deal with nightmares once in a while, but this can't even compare to the damage they do. They're out of control, and somebody has to stop them before they destroy Dreamland. The more Melissa listened to Nicholas, the more she realized how dangerous Dreamwalkers actually were. She no longer saw them as saviors, but rather as criminals who put peaceful existence of Dreamlanders at risk. Finally, the girl responded, I agree to join you. That Dreamwalker girl broke in the supermarket, stole the food and attacked me for simply seeing her there. If this is why they come to our world, then I will do my best to put an end to it. When Melissa mentioned the girl from the supermarket, Nicholas' face darkened. I know who you're talking about. Her name is Lou, and she's the biggest troublemaker of all of them. Don't be afraid, sister. We will protect you from her. After this, the boy gave Melissa a bracelet with the symbol of their society. The girl put it on her wrist without a second thought. Now that Melissa officially joined the Anti-Dreamwalker Society, her new friends agreed that it was time for her to visit their headquarters. It turned out to be a nice and cozy cafe run by Nicholas' father. When Melissa came in, multiple Anti-Dreamwalker propaganda posters caught her eye. On one of them, she saw a familiar face with a creepy devilish smile and a pair of purple glowing eyes. Melissa stopped in front of the poster and whispered to herself, I will make you pay for what you did. I'm not alone anymore. A brand new YouTube cartoon about a simple girl called Leandra who discovers a special ability to control her dreams. She will travel to Dreamland, a parallel universe where anyone can become a superhero. Are you brave enough to help Leandra save innocent people of Dreamland from the invasion of evil monsters? Are you ready to learn the dark secrets of this place? Watch the first episode of Dreamophrenia now and find this out!